Welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. We are talking about Cisco to Brocade migrations, and in this episode, uh, we are particularly talking about dynamic port channel to lag, or um, what some people call Ether channel, or LACP, or basically being able to dynamically take multiple physical interfaces and group them into one logical interface. So the benefits of a lag, of course, is that you know it increases the amount of, of throughput. Um, it increases your resiliency, right? If you lose a link, that's OK. It takes it out of the rotation. Um, you don't run spanning tree between the different interfaces, so it doesn't block ports. Um, you get nearly instantaneous failover. So lots of good reasons why you would want to use a lag. Uh, and using a dynamic lag is um, preferred over a static lag because a dynamic lag will check itself with LACP. It basically error checks itself to make sure that um, you know you haven't plugged a, a cable into the wrong port or the wrong switch or you know misconfigured one end versus the other. Uh, LAC, uh, dynamic LACP will catch that, where a static lag will not. The static lag doesn't care what the other end is doing, and you can cause a loop through your network and cause some serious uh, network degradation if you misconfigure things that a dynamic lag will catch. So uh, we'll hop over here. So on the Cisco side, uh, we create a channel group, right? So uh, config T, we'll go to interface, giggy, uh, 0, 11, and we'll just create our um, channel dash group. We'll give it a number, so uh, four mode, um, and what the mode in it for a dynamic is going to be active, right? So if this was a if this was a static lag you were trying to create, then the mode is on because it's on the link aggregation is on, so it'll it'll low bounce across them. Um, whereas active says it's actively you know going to solicit an LACP connection, and um, and try to do it that way. So. Uh, so we've added it to port 011, uh, gigabit ethernet 011. So we'll go to interface, gigabit ethernet uh, 012, and do the same thing. So uh, channel, channel, channel group 4 mode active for that port. And then we're going to create our interface. So interface um, port dash channel, give it a number, which is 4. Uh, we're going to do a switch port. Uh, trunk in cap dot one Q. So we're going to set it for dot one Q encapsulation. Um, switch port. Um, let's see. Trunk allow VLAN um, uh, 40, let's say. And uh, then switch port mode trunk. So we'll put it in trunk mode. Now it, it could be an access, of course, right? But in this case, we're going to put it in trunk mode and we're going to tag VLAN 40 across that interface. So those two interfaces, 011, 012, will solicit, will send out LECP packets, try to solicit a neighbor relationship and um, and dynamically, you know, build that lag on the fly. Uh, so it'll stop a misconfiguration, etc. So that's, that's the Cisco side. So on the brocade side, it's uh, it's quite a bit different, but y it's uh, it's very easy to understand once you see it. So we, we call it a lag, give it a name. So to Cisco is the name I'm going to assign it, and then it is dynamic, right? So it could be static, it could be um, keep alive, but in this case it's going to be a dynamic, right? So again, it's dynamically going to try to solicit with LACP. So we add our ports to it. So ports, uh, Ethernet 1111 to 1112. So we'll add our ports in the lag. We have to have a primary port. So the primary port is where the configuration gets done. But the primary port is also where um, you know broadcast and unknown unicast go. So uh, primary port is Ethernet 1111. Oh, sorry. So primary one one eleven. I don't need the Ethernet here. Uh, depends on the on the code you're running. 
uh, and then we'll deploy our lag. So you can finish the configuration and deploy it at the end. We'll deploy it right now, it doesn't really matter. So it tells me that it's successfully deployed, right? Um, and then we'll create our VLAN here, or go into our VLAN, VLAN 40, and we are going to tag E1111, uh, which, because that's the primary port, it automatically tags all the rest of the ports um, that are that are part of that port, that lag, right? So it tagged 1111 and 1112 to VLAN 40 in that interface. Now, of course, you can have multiple VLANs on there. It can be access, it could be tagged, um, so it could be tagged or untagged, it's, it's up to you. So as long as they match across the ports, it doesn't really matter. And once the lag is created and deployed, then whatever you do on the primary port, everyone else is gonna follow. So easy as that, you know, slightly different way to think about it, rather than creating that, that um, interface port channel and assigning that channel group to the interfaces, we create that lag and add the ports to the, to the, to the lag rather than adding the lag to the ports. So. Uh, but otherwise, uh, once it's up, it's functionally exactly the same, and of course it is, you know, cross-compatible, so you can connect one end of that LECP lag to a, to a brocade and the other end to a Cisco, and it will work just fine. Okay, so that's it for dynamic lags. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time. Take